Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Jones. I'm pathway lead for the humanities pathway and also the professional pathway. Today, I'm just going to give you a little bit more information about the subjects in the humanities pathway. So we are going to be looking at psychology, sociology, geography and religious studies. Uh, and I'll just just remind you as well that there are also uh, individual presentations um, that go into a little bit more detail about uh, what's involved in each of these subjects and how they're all assessed as well and just other queries that you might have. OK, so often the first thing that we get asked on um, on open days is, well, what are your results like? So the first thing to say is we're very proud of our results here at SGS. Um, our value added is in the top 5% of all schools and colleges. So what that means is that uh, we genuinely add value to the students uh, from the, the A-level grade that they would be predicted from their five best GCSE grades to the actual grade that they get when they finish two years with us. So we're really proud of that achievement. Um, some other information about just individual pass rates in subjects. So psychology has got uh, in the last season of exams, so in 2019, 100% uh, pass rate. So all 44 students uh, passed with an A to E. 74% of them got between A star to C. Um, and uh, also there was an almost 50% high grades, which are A star to B as well. Um, so we're really proud of our, our results in psychology, uh, which have been consistently excellent over the years. Um, with sociology, um, again, almost 100% pass weight rate, uh, only one student failed out of, uh, of 46 students. Uh, there was a 66% A to C pass rate um, at the second year, uh, but Perhaps more impressive was that um, in the first year we had 63% high grades at AS, so that is either A or B. Uh, and certainly the new sociology team that have been with us for a couple of years have really contributed um, to the um, a, a real uplift in the results. So they are now well above uh, sick form benchmarks, not just college ones. Um, geography in 2019 also had 100% pass rate, pass rate with a 50% A star to C pass rate as well. Um, religious studies is a new subject area for uh, 2020. Um, it, we used to offer philosophy, uh, but now to give it its elongated name, it's philosophy, religion and ethics. Uh, so again, we don't have any results for the new course, but in 2019 with philosophy, um, we had 50% uh, of students got um, a, a star to C on that course. So we were, we were proud of that. Uh, the other thing to say um, about humanities subjects is that they are very popular. So across AS and A2, our first and second years, we probably got about 200 students studying subjects in psychology, sociology, geography and religious studies. Psychology and sociology are particularly popular subject areas um, in, in our courses. Uh, just a little bit more about um, how the courses are assessed. Uh, so psychology, sociology and religious studies um, are all 100% exam, uh, whereas geography um, is 80% exam with 20% coursework. Um, so we all do AS exams in each of these subjects. So we've got um, in psychology and uh, also in sociology, uh, you've got two one and a half hour exams at the end of your first year, and that will give you an AS grade, which is worth 40% of your entire A, um, a level. Um, if you plan to continue with your A-levels, then you do the um, it, you can do three two hour exams at the end of the second year in psychology and sociology, uh, and that will give you um, an, a whole A-level and those exams will assess the content of the first two years. Um, with religious studies, the exams are structured slightly differently. Um, so in the first year for AS, you have three one and a quarter hour, one and a quarter hour exams at the end of your first year. And in the second year, you have got uh, three two hour exams. Uh, geography works a little bit differently. Um, if you just do it AS, you have two uh, one and a half hour ex exams at the end of the first year, uh, one on human geography and one on physical geography. Uh, whereas if you do it at A2, so you take it through to the two years, um, you will do a 20% coursework, so which will be field work, which will write a report on, which is between three and 4,000 words in length. Uh, and you will have two two and a half hour exams uh, on the topics that you have looked at, which will be again, a mixture of human um, and uh, physical geography that you'll look at across the two years. Um, 
uh, just across to my right is a testimony from um, one of the students that studied here. Um, so this student got three B's in psychology, sociology and philosophy, uh, and she's now doing a, a psychology degree at Bath Spa University. And she, like many of our students, have commented on the high level of support that she's got here at SGS. We really do pride ourselves in, in, in really caring for our students and working really hard to get them the best possible grades that they can get. Um, in terms of future careers that you can do in relation to the different pathways. Um, so psychologist is a general term that can enca encapsulate lots of specialised psychology degrees. Um, so psychology is a very popular discipline. So people that go on to become psychologists will do a psychology degree and then usually will do either a master's or a PhD afterwards if they want to specialise in any of the related fields like sports psychology, clinical, occupational, educational, uh, research psychology. Um, other things to say though is a psychology degree um, sets you up because it gives you lots of general skills uh, which graduate employers really like because you have to think scientifically, you have a good understanding of human behaviour and you can also write clearly and fluently as well. Um, so it lends itself to, for example, careers in, in, in HR or just any sort of graduate employers that are looking for people with a more holistic skill range. Um, so Sociology, again, um, because it gives you that increased understanding of um, human behaviour, it's a good general degree to do, but you can do certain related careers. So one of them is working in the social services um, uh, and again, building a career up in there. Um, other things that you can do is work in local government and uh, contribute to and set policies um, that, that help um, how the local areas run. Um, Alongside uh, psychology, sociology, uh, philosophy, um, you can also go into teaching and academic research as well. Um, so um, again, the the social science um, the social science qualifications really do give you that increased understanding of human behaviour, which really helps in a teaching context. But again, some of our uh, some some of our alumni, uh, people that have left, have gone on to um, get PhDs at university. Uh, one of my students has just finished. His, PA, his psychology PhD at, uh, psych, um, at Cardiff University, um, for example. Um, other things that you can do in relation to um, um, religion, uh, so religious studies or philosophy, religion and ethics, to give it its full title, um, relates to um, working the charity sector as well. And again, you can do this with um, a social work qualification, um, because again, um, the, the, the types of topics that you look on, on, on these particular areas really lend themselves to uh, any career that involves sort of helping people for the greater good. Um, in relation to geography qualifications, I've picked out a couple of careers that you could do. Um, so town planner, which kind of speaks for itself, really um, sort of contributing to uh, designing and uh, extending existing towns or perhaps uh, planning new ones uh, and surveyor as well. So anyone that's ever bought a house, uh, the report that you get on the quality of the house, uh, the quality of the building work is carried out by a, um, a, a surveyor. Uh, so that that relates to that career. Um, we've got another quote here from a student. So um, somebody who did psychology uh, last year uh, alongside sociology and also economics, uh, got two A stars and an A and is now doing experimental psychology um, at Oxford University. Um, in terms of enrichment opportunities, um, so there are quite a few things that we do across the different subjects. Um, so obviously geography lends itself to field field trips. They're really important. Uh, so there is a field trip planned for Skern Lodge Field Study Centre in Devon uh, later on this year. Um, they do do it as a residential trip, but given the circumstances with COVID, it might just be a day trip. Uh, Skern Lodge is an area of absolute natural beauty uh, and it gives geography students an opportunity to uh, carry out the type of work that they need to do for their NEA or coursework. Um, so it's a trip but it also contributes to their course assessment. Um, you've got another geography field trip to the coasts um, basically because um, coastal regions is part of physical geography which you look at on the course so it's a good opportunity to make links with you what you see in the classroom what you see in the real world. Um, the Bristol Graffiti Project 
project um, is a project that psychology, sociology and geography are doing in tandem. It basically involves um, having a tour around the various um, uh, spots in Bristol where there is some of this amazing graffiti art um, and also that can lead to sort of a greater discussion um, about the, the social psychological impacts um, on, on the city uh, and also looking at uh, how the changing face of the city as well. Um, so link, making links with geography as well as psychology and sociology. Um, we um, all of our subjects have got uh, guest le lecturers that are due to come in. Uh, so U the University of the West of England, uh, UE Outreach Works, we'll get students come in uh, to actually um, uh, talk about university life. Uh, we've got a planned trip to Gloucester University as well, another U university in our area. Um, sociology and religious studies um, are also planning to get guest lecturers like, like what happened last year uh, to talk a little bit more about those subjects and how they're different um, at university level. Um, so, for example, um, Bash Khan, uh, our, our religious studies or philosophy, philosophy, religion and ethics teacher, is planning to get somebody from Exeter University to come in to do a talk. Um, Psychology lends itself to health and well-being. Uh, so, so again, um, my colleague Nadine Hennessy um, is planning to do some mindfulness workshops, which, on the one hand, as well as uh, uh, helping students improve their mental health, also can. Um, help them make links with some of the areas that we look at in psychology. So, for example, um, looking at psychopathology, um, how we can treat certain mental illnesses like depression, anxiety disorders. Um, also, um, we're going to look at other related psychology disciplines and uh, looking at emotional intelligence, uh, which is in contrast to academic intelligence. So having a good understanding of your own emotions and being able to read emotions in other people. And also psychometric testing, which is looking at uh, carrying out test to uh, work out aspects of your personality uh, and whether it's suitable for certain careers and certain occupations um, in society. So again, um, lots of opportunities for students to develop their um, personal, social and employability skills in this humanities pathway. So just a little bit more about the team. Uh, so we've got Mary Glidon, who is our geography teacher. Um, Mary has been with us um, for, uh, she, she joined us within the last year. Um, she's a highly experienced teacher um, and has really enjoyed and really made a positive impact um, on the students um, since we employed her um, in the last year. Uh, we've also got Lizzie Moore. Again, she, she arrived with us two years ago. Um, again, a highly experienced sociology teacher who's also an examiner. Um, who has worked um, in schools and also in colleges as well. Um, and again, has contributed some to some really excellent results um, since she started here. Um, in addition to that, we've got Bash Khan, um, who, um, whose background is in philosophy, uh, but he also, um, he, he also teaches on the sociology course as well. Uh, so he teaches that in tandem uh, with Lizzie. Um, but in addition to that, he also teaches on the, uh, philosoph um, the, the religious studies, philosophy and ethics course as well. Um, Bash has got a PhD in in philosophy, um, he's taught in higher education as well as further education settings as well. So a wide range of experience. Um, Nadine Hennessy is my colleague in the psychology department. She has been here uh, with us for a couple of years. Um, she has done um, teaching posts uh, previously, but she's also got a background in human resources as well. Um, so she's she's very good at making those practical links between um, what we what we see in the classroom and how that can impact on the real world. Uh, and then finally, that's a um, less than glamorous photo of me, Mark Jones, um, and I've been teaching at the college since uh, 2004, um, always uh, psychology. I'm also obviously pathway lead now as well. And I've been teaching psychology since 2001. Um, I'm also married to a psychology teacher. And uh, amongst the many things that we've done, we've, um, we've um, co-written some of the GCSE textbooks and revision guides uh, and also um, produce some teaching resources for the A-level textbooks as well. Um, so that, that's just a bit of an overview of our team. Uh, I'm just going to put on the last slides to give you an opportunity to put across any questions, any further questions that you've got for me that I haven't covered in my talk.
Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. So, so, so far, we've, we've had, had seven, seven questions. questions. And they've all been um, very good very questions. Good I think uh, one that was quite interesting is taking religious studies a good option if I want to become a human rights or immigration lawyer? Uh, yes, uh, is, is a good option. Um, just looking into the subjects that you look at a little bit more um, more, more thoroughly on the uh, philosophy, religion and ethics studies. So um, you do look at things such as um, uh, in the ethics section, you look at um, euthanasia and uh, you have debates about, uh, you know, wh whether people should be entitled um, for um, uh, to have rights in relation to uh, euthanasia. Uh, we also look at business ethics as well. So looking at uh, debates between, um, you know what's more important in business is it profit is it is it care for the people that are your service users um we also um and generally speaking in the in the um lessons um the they are just um structured in a certain way so there's a lot of debates because within philosophy religion and ethics um you have to do a2 the second year uh, 40 mark questions um which are effectively writing a thousand word discussion um, on various issues that come up in the course. So the fact that you are having that formative training where you are discussing in lessons and then writing in such a way so you can produce you know, produce a thorough essay that looks at both sides of the debate. I mean, that's a really good formative experience in relation to the, the career that you that you um, just alighted to in your question. We also have another question that asks how much science is including psychology? Uh, that's another good question. So um, psychology has got a bit of biology uh, in it. So we look at a um, the structure and function of the nervous system. Um, so we look at the difference between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. We also look at um, uh, things such as synaptic transmission, uh, how neurons communicate in the brain and the different types um, of neurons as well. Um, I mean, we also look in a little bit more detail at the structure of the brain. Um, so we look at uh, how different brain areas affect behaviour in different ways. Uh, and we also look at uh, endogenous pacemakers and endogenous side guides. So uh, basically internal structures and external cues in our environment that can affect our bodily rhythms, which are bodily changes um, over a certain period of time. Um, in addition to that, we will carry out scientific investigation um, so you need to know sort of like a general understanding of GCSE science, i.e. what's the difference between an independent variable, dependent variable, the idea that you have to control extraneous variables within your um, within your studies when you are doing lab experiments. Um, so I've given you quite a lot of detail there, but sort of in, in context, the biological psychology that I've described is basically one of 11 units. Um, and also the level of scientific knowledge you need isn't as high as something like physics, chemistry um, or A-level biology. That's why we only want one five in science subjects, but actually um, the two fives in the English subjects that we want for psychology are, are arguably more important because you have to be able to write and communicate your ideas effectively. OK, so it's not as high level as A-level or the other A-level science subjects uh, by any means in summary. Thank you very much, Mark. And um, that brings us to the end of this Humanities Pathway presentation. Uh, at 12 o'clock, we will begin in, uh, we will be beginning the professional services presentation. I have posted the link to that in the uh, Q&A section. Um, if you would like to uh, ask Mark anything else, please email Mark at Mark dot jones at sgscall.ac.uk. You can also find more information at, on our website. Um, that would be www.sgscall.ac.uk forward slash study forward slash A-levels. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.